What's up you guys? So today we're going to go over the problem clone graph. This problem is asked at Amazon and Facebook. So the description says, given a reference of a node in a connected undirected graph, return a deep copy clone of the graph. Each node in the graph contains a val, int, and a list, which is a list of nodes of its neighbors. And it also mentions that uh, an adjacency list is a collection of unordered lists used to represent a finite graph. And so that is the way the test cases are formatted, are using adjacency lists. And it also says the given node will always be the first node with value equal to one. You must return the copy of the given node as a reference to the clone graph. So in this first example, we have a graph containing the nodes 1, 2, 3, and 4, and we need to clone this input. So all of these nodes, 1, 2, 3, and 4, we need to allocate completely new memory and make the same connections in our clone graph that we have in our input. So we're going to use DFS to solve this problem. You can also solve this using BFS, but I find the DFS way a bit more simple. So let's jump over to the whiteboard and I'll show you guys how we can solve this. So in this graph, we have the nodes 1, 2, 3, and 4. And this is an undirected graph. So what that means is that each edge in our graph is connected both ways. So 1 is connected to 2, 2 is connected to 1, 2 is connected to 4, 4 is connected to 2, and so on. So let's write out all of the connections that we have in this graph. So let's first look at node 1. Node 1 is connected to 2 and 3, right? So we can put 2 and 3 here. We have node 2. 2 is connected to 1 and 4. Uh, node 3 is connected to 1 and 4 as well. And then finally, node 4 is connected to 2 and 3. So what we've just drawn out here will actually be our input to our function. And we will specifically be given the very first node. And from there, since all of these nodes are connected, we don't have any part of the graph that are separated. So we just need the very first node, and we need to clone all of these connections uh, to a new graph. So the way we're going to do that is using DFS. So what this depth first search is going to allow us to do is we're going to traverse over every single node in our graph. And as we are traversing over each node in the input, we're going to make clones, copies of each node so that we can make the same connections in our clone graph that we have in our input graph. And so the way we're going to know which input node maps to new copied nodes is we're going to use a map where the key will be an integer and the value will be our new copied node. So this will be the key value in our map. And we're going to start at node 1. We're always given node 1. And we don't have to worry about duplicate uh, values. Uh, we can always assume that we have unique integers for each input node. So we're going to start looking at node 1. And since 1 is not in our map thus far, what that tells us is we need to create a new entry. So we're going to say 1 is mapped to a new node of the value 1. And then we're going to look at all of the neighbors from node 1. And so we already know the neighbors, 2 and 3. So we need to visit node 2. And now, since the number 2 is not in our map, what that tells us is we need to create another copy node. So we're going to say 2 is mapped to the node with a value 2. And since we just visited node 2, don't forget that we also have to make sure that we make the same connection, 1 to 2. So we need to take our copied node 1 and map it to our copied node 2. Each node has a list of nodes embedded inside of the object. So if we were to call this node 1 prime, node 2 prime, node 1 prime would have 
2 prime map to it, right? And so now we're going to continue on in the DFS for node 2. So we're going to check backwards because we see that node 2 has a connection to node 1. But since node 1 is already in our map, we don't have to do any further DFS on this node. The only thing we have to do is add node one, specifically node one prime, to the list of node two prime. So we're gonna make the mapping here. Node two prime now has node one prime. And then we continue on. We see that node two is also connected to node four right here. So we're gonna visit node four. And since node 4 is not in our map, we need to create another copy. So we're going to say 4 is mapped to a new node with value 4. And we can call this node 4 prime. So we need to tie node 2 to node 4, specifically the copies. So we can say 4 prime is now making the connection from node 2 prime to node 4 prime. And then we need to continue DFS on this node 4. So node 4 has two connections, 2 and 3. So we're going to check 2. We see that the number 2 is already in our map, so we don't need to perform a DFS on it. The only thing we need to do is make the connection. So we can say 2 prime is here. And then we're going to check the 3 node, so we're going to visit 3 because 3 is not in our map. So now we can say 3 is mapped to a new node of the value 3. And this is node 3 prime. And so we need to make sure that we make the connection of node 4 prime to node 3 prime. So now this becomes node 3 prime. And so now we're going to visit node 3. So we need to check all of the neighbors at node 3, which would be node 1 and 4. So we're going to look up, and we see that number 1 is already in our map. So all we need to do is make that connection here. So we can say this is now 1 prime. And then we check node 4, 3 to 4. 4 is already in our map, so now we need to add 4 prime. And then finally, when we go all the way back up this recursion stack, uh, we still have not checked node 1 to node 3, right? So let's do that. 3 is already in our map. So all we need to do is make the connection from node 1 prime to node 3 prime. So we add 3 prime into this list. And then by the end of our DFS, we will return this number one node. And since the graph is all connected together, uh, just returning this one node will return the entire graph. So hopefully that was a helpful example for you guys. Let's go over to the code now and I'll show you guys how we can implement this. So as you can see, we're given a class node and it has two different attributes, the first being a value and the second being a list of nodes, which are our neighbors. In the function, we're given a node, which will be the value one every time. And we need to return a node, which will be our clone graph. So the first thing we can do is let's just check for null input just in case. So we could say if node is equal to null, then just return null. And then we need to create our map structure that we talked about. So we're going to map an integer to the class node. And this node, the value in our map will be the copy. And then we're, let's create another helper function. And this will actually be a recursive function that clones each node as we are going through our DFS. So we can just say return clone graph. And we're just going to pass in our node and our map. There's only two things we need. And so this is where we write the DFS function. So we can say private node clone graph. And we're going to give it a node. 
And we're going to pass in our map. And so the first thing we want to do is we want to check if the node.value is already in our map. If it's already in our map, we do not need to visit that node again. So we can say if map, if it contains the key node.val, then we need to return whatever node is being mapped in our map currently. Because remember, every, every node that's being returned from this recursive function will be the copied node, not the original node. So we'll say return map.getNode.val. Because we're already doing a check if it contains the key. So we know that there is a copied node inside of this map. So we just return that copied node. And now if we are able to make it to line 32, what that tells us is we do not have a copied node for this specific value and we need to create it. So we can say node and call it copy equals a new node of whatever node.val is. And then we need to store it in our map. So we can say map.put node.val our copy node. And now this is where the DFS comes in. We're going to call this clone, clone graph recursively. So we're going to loop over all of our neighbors for our input node. So we can say node, this is our neighbor, and we are looping over all of our neighbors, right? And we, we already have the copied node, so we need to make sure that we make the same connections. So we can access our neighbors using copy.neighbors, and we're going to add in the recursive call of clone graph because clone graph is always returning the cloned nodes. So we can call clone graph and we're going to pass in our neighbor and our map. And then finally, all we need to do is return our copy. So as you can see, each call to clone graph is creating a new copy of whatever node we're currently looking at if it has not been created. So this is pretty much the main part of the DFS because we have to call this function recursively on every single neighbor. So let's just make sure that this code works. Oh, I did something wrong. Oh, neighbor, it needs to be node.neighbors. So let's submit again. And there we go. So next, I'll go over the time and space complexity. The time complexity of our solution is going to be big O of n, where n is the number of nodes that we have in our graph. Since we're performing a DFS, we have to touch every single node a single time. And then our space complexity is also big O of n. We're making a copy of every node in the original graph. So if we have n nodes, we're making n copies, and that's why our space complexity is big O of n. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one.